Welcome to the Mile High Pediatric Summit. We are so grateful to have everyone join us. This is the opening first segment of the virtual free chiropractic pediatric summit. You know, we've done um, four different Mile High Summits. One was the Philosophy Summit, that, and then there was the Science Summit, dealing with how people were saying there's no science for subluxation. And then we had the art summit to help you up, up level in the art and then a business summit. So this year we decided to focus on the kids and focus on the ICPA. So important thing with this is that you can watch this today and tomorrow. We hope you were here with us live the whole time. And there's a chat bar there so you can watch and interact with people. And if you'd like to get the replays, you can do that um, by making a simple, minimal donation to the ICPA, which will help support their research agendas. Um, just donate at least $100. And of course, you can donate more. I'm sure the ICPA would support that, but at least $100 donation will give you VIP access to the whole pediatric summit. But not only that, all the summits that we've done, and you can have them on a little handy app that you can watch listen to on the go um, and up-level your chiropractic knowledge. Uh, and of course, we wanna encourage you to be at Mile High Live in September, okay? So be in higher ground in September, September 21st to 24th. And um, that's riseuptomilehigh.com. You can get all the information on that. And we're really grateful to be doing this for the chiropractic profession. We want people to up-level and you know raise up as chiropractors to be able to have more impact on our communities I mean, you, it's no doubt that the world needs it if you look what's happened in the recent uh, recent uh, years. Uh, so Dr. Justin Ohm, second generation chiropractor with a strong focus on perinatal and newborn care, father of four, God bless you, and director of the ICPA. Um, and we are so glad to have you here, Dr. Justin. Thank you for joining us. Danny, thank you so much for having me. And I just wanted to say thank you for putting this on and and for the uh, donation requests for, for the ICPA. And what I would say with that is, uh, you know, donations are great. We love donations, but uh, better yet, uh, instead of donating, join us. If you're not already an ICPA member, join us, become a member. We are, uh, I wanted to announce <laughs> uh, today that we passed 8,000 members, but we're about 40 members short. So we're just... Oh. So maybe if maybe we could get pushed over with this event, that would be uh, outstanding. But that's our goal. More and more members. And and Danny, like you said, joining forces coming together at this time of uh, really dramatic increased polarity, I think, is what uh, the profession needs. And I think that's what the world needs. Well, I couldn't agree more. And if you notice at the bottom of your screen here, there's a couple boxes. One is to donate to ICPA, and there's also a box to join as a member, and you can click that and join. So hopefully we can do the course of this weekend, uh, get hit that 40-person goal. That'd be stellar. I've been a member for the ICPA for, for years and years. I don't even remember how many years. Uh, but, you know, I was supporting the vision of kids and chiropractic. If that's part of your life and values, then do that as well as donate. And then you'll also see there's a box to register for Mile High. Uh, we'll see you in September. And then there's also a box to be able to get streaming access to all that. So, you know, this is a lot of opportunities uh, for people that to, you know, make a difference in the profession and make a difference in their own practice and life in their community. So um, first of all, I'd like to ask you this personally, um, because you and I share this experience a little bit. Um, what's it like being a second generation chiropractor? Well, I think, um, you know, you kind of, you, you take some of it for granted because you grow up with it. And, um, and you know, especially, you know, my parents being who they were and the chiropractors that they were and, you know, with the principles that they had, you grew up with that um, being reiterated just in daily life, you know, that you can trust your body. Uh, that sickness uh, doesn't mean disease. You know, if you're if you have a symptom, it doesn't mean that something's wrong. It actually is probably highlighting how uh, your body's doing something right under those circumstances. And instead of you know freaking out and trying to uh, uh, you know suppress that symptom, uh, you address the circumstances in your life. You know, and uh, and so it kind of drives home those those principles. And uh, and it's amazing how that you know, really, uh, you know, I took it for granted until, uh, you know, everything went crazy a couple of years ago. 
<laughs> and then it was just like, oh my gosh, you know, that laid such a solid foundation. And I felt humbled to have that experience. And I'm not saying that you have to be a second gen chiropractor to have had that experience. Um, I think we've all had, you know, we saw that, you know, in our patients and our practice, uh, you know, surprise us how much they got it, how much they, uh, you know, found resolve, you know, uh, in those in those principles of trusting the body. But I really try to apply that thinking, um, you know, to every uh, conflict that I am presented with. And certainly that's how I raise my kids, too. Um, you know, so it's a blessing. And I've been in practice now for 16 years uh, I have four kids. They're they're growing up. My oldest just turned 16. She just got her permit license, and uh, <clears throat> I was driving. She was driving us home from the. She didn't want to. Like no, no, I don't, I'm not ready. <laughs> like this is, we're not leaving here unless you drive. And it was terrifying <laughs> you know, <laughs> to be in the car in that situation. But um, but I draw a lot of strength from my kids too, and I watch how they uh, persevere through. Uh, you know, challenges in their own life and athletics and everything. Um, and I'm just super proud dad. And uh, I'm in practice too. So a lot of people, you know, aren't aware of that. I practice uh, three days a week uh, out of two offices. I have an associate now, thank God. Um, <laughs> but, uh, and and alongside my dad, two of those days. So it's a blessing. And, um, but I'm I'm still down there in the trenches and adjusting babies and adjusting pregnant moms. And, uh, and that's what's important. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know what it's like juggling some things that you're doing in the profession beyond uh, practice and practicing at the same time. So I, 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 I'm along there with you. And now also before we dive more into more topical matter, the ICPA, can you share a little quickly, what is the ICPA is why? Well, the, the, you know, I like to kind of explain the story. You've seen uh, this happen over and over in practice, but this, this kind of really illustrates it. When a family uh, comes in and they get under chiropractic care, uh, they don't just see uh, improvement to their, you know, spinal health and neurological function. You see a shift in mentality. You see that trust start to kind of really uh, uh, come forward in their lives and parents feel uh, uh, encouraged or, you know, uh, you know, empowered, uh, to make healthcare decisions for themselves and for their kids. And so this is the chiropractic family lifestyle. This is what we call this, you know, as you get under chiropractic care, you know, those families that could, they come in regularly, they just come in regularly, they get it, it's part of their lifestyle. And they, uh, they think differently. It's like it turns on a part of their brain, you know, getting adjusted, being exposed to the philosophy and everything else. Uh, that otherwise is is rather difficult to have turned on, and it changes them as a family, and it, and and it changes the trajectory of their health and their kids' health, um, and so that's the chiropractic family lifestyle. And so the mission, the why of the ICPA, is to uh, spread the chiropractic family lifestyle, uh, you know, all all over the planet, and that's what we're looking to do. Uh, and and we think, you know, really the best way to do that is to train chiropractors, right, in pediatrics and perinatal care. So you have that certainty, you know, going into practice, um, uh, you know, and absolutely validating the care that we like to provide. Family care is, uh, if you've been under a rock, it's under threat, you know, in other countries and in our country. Uh, and so validating the care that we uh, appreciate that we are all practicing in, um, that's the mission of the ICPA. And that's through our research agenda and then public education. And that brings, you know, more and more people into this mindset of, you know, hmm, questioning the status quo and uh, and 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 looking for alternatives and trusting the body. And that's done through our public education arm, which is the Pathways magazine, you know, um, so you know, we just redid the Pathways website and we think that's going to dramatically increase the reach, you know, instead of it just being a, a physical magazine. Now it's a beautiful, you know, gorgeous, shareable website. But those are the three tenets of the ICPA, research, training, public education. And it's all with that mission of expanding the chiropractic family lifestyle. Love it. I absolutely love it. And wow, such an important uh, aspect of chiropractic. I mean, huge. Um, so thank you for doing that. And thank you for picking up the torch there. Um, with that, 
uh, let's talk with uh, the early years. Okay, so things start, uh, you know, chiropractically perinatal and things start, you know, breastfeeding and kids. Um, have you noticed in this last several years or maybe last decade or so that there's more talk about tongue tie? Well, yeah, we see it was an interesting thing kind of coming into practice right around uh, 2006. And, um, you know, it was quiet at first, but then, you know, you started hearing it more and more patients coming in. Oh, my, my child's been diagnosed with tongue tie. Uh, and it just started becoming so, so prevalent. And, um, I think the figures, one paper cites a, you know, 850% increase in the oh. rate of tongue tie. Now you have to understand that includes anterior, you know, kind of traditional structural tongue tie and posterior tongue tie, which is a fairly new term. Uh, you know, that came online in the mid 2000s uh, as, as kind of being a new diagnosis. And, um, you know, there's historical evidence for, you know, the structural tongue tie that we've been kind of seeing for hundreds of years. You can go back in midwifery journals and, and stuff like that. But, uh, but, but certainly the increase that we've seen over the past 15, 20 years uh, is, is exponential. And it's really hard to explain um, so, you know, there's, there's been some theories talking about, you know, folic acid and, you know, MTHFR gene mutation and some of these things. Um, but to date, there hasn't been any, you know, studies that could, you know, really validate that. And, um, uh, we haven't seen a, uh, you know, a direct correlation between MTHFR. Um, so it's like, what is going on, you know, and I, and I want to just read a quote, um, you know, from DD Palmer and that's from you know, from this book, The Chiropractor's Adjuster, back in 1910. And that's, the quote is, uh, mothers and their babies are liable to be injured at childbirth. Many have their vertebrae displaced at this critical period, causing acute and chronic diseases. If the adjuster is a chiropractor, he can adjust such, thereby preventing dis-ease. And so we know uh, birth is traumatic, you know, uh, the stress, the strain, the trauma of birth, um, I think sets these, these babies up to have a tremendous amount of tension. And so when we talk about this, this diagnosis of tethered oral tissue, I think a lot of it is this functional uh, discrepancy, uh, this, this manifestation as a result of birth trauma. And there's more and more, you know, papers coming out on this. Um, but certainly, uh, this is what resonates uh, uh, with me in practice, ha you know, the, the results that we can see in practice, you know, if kids get under care early uh, and, and with the appropriate degree of frequency, uh, I, as opposed to letting it ride. And then these, you know, feeding challenges can turn into, uh, you know, weight gain challenges. And at that point, all bets are off, you know, that, that mom, that dyad is in a crisis situation. And uh, I would never, you know, come in and say uh, a surgical, you know, release or revision at that point isn't appropriate. We got to get that baby, you know, uh, you know, eating, uh, you know, nursing appropriately. But I think if we change, if we can be, uh, you know, part of this change in perception that early on, as a result of even a normal natural childbirth, Early on, the importance of having that baby's spine checked, specifically upper cervical and, and, and cranial, uh, you know, tension is so rampant. And if we can help resolve that early, we can help normalize function, just like we always, we, I mean, we know chiropractic does this. This is, this is what chiropractic does. It normalizes function. It helps restore optimal function and, 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 and applying this thinking. Uh, early, uh, you know, for infants, I think is the absolute key to uh, helping to reverse this, you know, this trend. So, so important, so important. And chiropractors, unfortunately, don't learn much about this in uh, their baseline chiropractic training at, at all. And that's why the ICPA's programs are a part of why the ICPA's programs are so vital is that they're not going to get to get that in school. Yeah, I, I actually remember thinking that early in practice, like, oh, I guess there's this new thing that they just forgot to teach us, you know, <laughs> in school. And it's so uh, it's so rampant. And um, anyway, I think there's a lot of reasons that went into, you know, why that that, you know, increase in diagnosis happened. But um, but needless to say, yeah, I think birth trauma plays a huge role in it. 
And now, so uh, with birth trauma, I mean, chiropractors talk about this all the time, uh, probably across the board that the first subluxation happens in birth very frequently. It's a commonly heard phrase in chiropractic. What are some things about birth trauma that you can point out to chiropractors that maybe have not taken ICPA trainings yet of what to look for? Well, uh, you know, one of the, one of our instructors, uh, Lisa Geiger talks about, and I'll just mention this because I think it's brilliant. Um, she calls it jet jet syndrome, J E T, uh, um, jaw, eye and torticolic, you know, tilt. So, uh, sometimes we'll see deviation of the jaw, you know, when that baby goes into a yawn or a, uh, when they start to cry or whatever, you see the jaw kind of pull off to one side, like kind of like a Rocky Balboa, you know, uh, mm -hmm. kind of move. Uh, and you'll see uh, differences in the eye. You'll see one eye appear a little bit lower, or you'll see one eye looking slightly tighter, uh, as if it it squints more when they go into a a cry or a smile or anything like that. You know, um, a yawn. Um, and and obviously, and this is just so common now with car seats and uh, babies spending more and more time in car seats. You'll see the the head tilt. So all of these are physical you know, visual, uh, you know, manifestations that uh, even a parent, and once you kind of, you know, teach this to the parents, uh, you know, this is what you want to look out for. Uh, they're coming in before, you know, if you're like, okay, how many times do I have to get adjusted? You know, uh, is, is a question some, you know, we'll get sometimes. And it's like, um, that's like asking your dentist how many times you have to brush your teeth. You know, like you want to keep taking care of your spine. Now, the frequency of that changes over time, certainly. Um, but and if they have these visual cues to kind of look at, especially with their infants that 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 can't verbally say once the child's old enough, I'm, Danny, I'm sure you've had this, too. Uh, they'll they'll be the one to remind mom or dad. I need to go see Dr. Justin. I need to go to the chiropractor. You know, they they bring it up. It's been a while. Why aren't we getting a job? You know, but when they're before they can start talking, this is a uh, this is a key thing to do. So um, anyway, the new breastfeeding and and tots course is all about uh, the functional support through chiropractic. And so it's it's all about the technique and the approach and the analysis uh, and how to take care of these kids. And it builds off of Lisa Geiger's work and that and that jet syndrome that I mentioned. Uh, that's all super important. So then, you know, put it again, if someone hasn't delved into ICPA training, which I would recommend people do, um, and if they're considering some parent that's bringing a kid and saying, I think they have tongue tie, or maybe one of their current practice members that's saying, my child has tongue tie, I'm going down this route. Uh, telling them on a first superficial level to say to look for this jet, jet would be a place to start saying, hey, maybe it's not tongue tie, but it's birth trauma. Uh, certainly, it's like if we see other, you know, visual presentations, um, I'm saying to that parent, before we do anything, like, who's to say that the tension that's causing right. the jaw deviation and the and the head tilt is not also affecting obviously obviously uh, the sublingual you know musculature and uh certainly you know if if we have evidence of that anterior uh frenulum uh, you know to the tip of the tongue uh these are more classic tongue ties but a lot of times the presentation is like i mentioned it's the baby is all sorts of tense and we have multiple, you know, data points on that. And, and, and all of those other, you know, uh, you know, data points are being ignored and just the tension under the tongue is being called this thing that necessitates, <clears throat> a, uh, you know, a surgical release. And I'm saying we need to step back and look at the bigger presentation here. And you can see, you can see signs. And then if you dig into the birth history, you will you will you will find evidence of uh that stress strain you know trauma very very often uh you know pulling twisting shoulder dystocia uh the baby presented asynclitic all of these things have the capacity to really impact the upper cervical uh and and cranial uh you know sutures uh to the extent that it's gonna affect functional capacity for that for that infant absolutely absolutely um Best practices. Are there some things relative to either birth trauma or 
care during pregnancy or, or some other area that you think are best practices are important for people to be aware of? There is um, <clears throat> there's a problem in general with, you know, best practices, papers. Uh, they often just kind of uh, review the consensus of, uh, mm. of, of, of what's thought, you know, of, of what's kind of what's done, not necessarily the clinical application of, of what should be done or how chiropractors are handling those cases currently in practice. And so this is an agenda item for us, uh, you know, to bring forward what we're calling guiding principles, chiropractic care of infants with feeding dysfunction. We're going to have guiding principles for a number of different topics, uh, as we move down the list, but this is really, um, we felt the necessity to kind of do this presentation first, you know, feeding dysfunction, uh, is so timely and, and needed because, you know, there's this, there's this, uh, you know, kind of whole industry built around, uh, uh, you know, kind of managing in a medical sense, uh, these infants. And again, not to say that that isn't warranted in some circumstances, but I feel like the trend is really accelerating. And um, so this is the first guiding principles. And the focus of it is the clinical, just like the course, you know, that I mentioned, but the clinical approach to caring for these types of uh, these babes. And, um, and that's the, that's the goal, you know, is to create that kind of uh, uh, competence and, and, you know, kind of a, an overarching, a document that any of our members, any of the profession can pick up and say, oh, okay, this is how this is handled in uh in an icpa doctor's office who's gone through all of this training like these are the steps this is what you look for first this is what you look for next this is the type of you know uh adjustments that are often most effective and most appropriate uh this type of document has not been done before so we're uh we're we're in the finishing stages of that before we bring that document to what's called con, you know uh, kind of bringing it to the public for consensus and that'll be reaching out to a you know larger circle of pediatric docs and then beyond that to the entire membership and beyond beyond uh you know the ICPA membership and beyond the profession even to kind of achieve or you know determine is there consensus on on this approach uh, can we all agree that we do this first? Can we all agree that this is an important area to look? Can we all agree that this is how, uh, you know, uh, we can best adjust, you know, in the, in this circumstance, uh, wow. et cetera, down the line. So it'll be a, it'll actually be a kind of a field manual in that sense for the practicing chiropractor, which I think is so key. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Um, you know what, uh, what's come up to my brain is things to ask people uh, or ask you right now is, you know, Likely there's many people watching that have taken the ICPA trainings and likely there's many that have not. Um, can you let people know, uh, at least on the surface level, what ICPA training programs include or uh, are involved? Um, well, I mean, we can talk about the four levels of certification that the ICPA offers. The, the first level is Webster certification. And that's the, uh, you know, preeminent technique for, uh, you know, pregnancy and taking care of pregnant moms, uh, balancing the pelvis in preparation for birth. Um, uh, if we can make birth, you know, uh, less intense, less, you know, traumatic or stressful for the infant, uh, a lot of this, uh, you know, care of the infant, in, you know, you know, latching difficulties, feeding difficulties, I think can be avoided, you know, before it even happens. Uh, so the first level of certification is that Webster certification. The next level is about, I think there's six or seven courses, um, about 72 hours of content uh, in the perinatal certification. So for that Webster doc who wants to then kind of gain a more comprehensive understanding of postnatal care, uh, you know, postpartum care, um, uh, preconception uh, care. Um, you know, uh, more, more of a deep dive into the perinatal aspect in general, that's the perinatal certification. From there, you're jumping up to our pediatric certification, which desig is designated by the letters CACCP. Um, and so that's a 200 hour certification process. Uh, there's, I believe, uh, 19 courses, uh, it might be 20 courses, 20 courses in the uh, CACCP certification, the pediatric certification and uh, that's capstoned with a more, uh, you know, lengthy essay-based examination process. Uh, it's a hurdle for sure. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a high feat to, 
you know, to pass that exam. Um, but it, it really keeps the bar extremely high for pediatric certification, which I think is appropriate if you're going to be putting yourself out there as pediatric certified by the ICPA. We want to make sure that you really have a, a, a firm grasp of, of the content. And then the next step up from there is uh, diplomat status. And that's 400 hours. So that's 200 hours of CACCP of pediatric certification, uh, plus another 200 hours of, uh, you know, continuing education and all sorts of projects, building your own class. We're looking for the next leaders uh, in family and pediatric care with, you know, with our diplomats. We're looking for, uh, you know, the next up and coming instructors. Uh, well, to be honest, you know, uh, with our diplomats. So those are the four levels. It's kind of, you know, uh, you know, people can just get their toes wet. Uh, the Webster certification is so helpful for, um, for, for docs because you're, li you're then listed on our referral directory as a Webster certified doc. Certainly they teach Webster technique in chiropractic colleges at this point. So some people come into that class, kind of, oh, what do I need this for? I already know it. It's like, you don't need it, but it gives you more exposure. You know, uh, yeah. gives you a deeper understanding of the technique, uh, you know, how to present yourself in practice, how to do this technique with, you know, with total confidence, um, you know, in a variety of presentations, twins, et cetera, you know, all sorts of presentations, pregnancy presentations. Um, but it gives you that exposure th through the referral directory. And, I'll, and you, I mean, pe that's how people find uh, me, you, you know, that's how people find me in practice, you know. Uh, they Googled Webster certified, you know, chiropractor, and then they did the search and, you know, I come up as their closest option. So, uh, it's a huge, uh, help, you know, for, in terms of kind of building the practice, it's a huge help for chiropractors. Wow. That's all phenomenal. And, you know, Matthew McCoy said something to me the other day that was, uh, he, he asked me, are you training enough people for the future? And so what you just said, you know, we have to be training enough people, for the future of chiropractic, um, it yeah. needs to, you know, go far beyond you and I, right. And everybody on this, uh, on, on this summit. So, you know, you have quite the training team at the ICPA. Um, I know you're pretty proud of them and all the work that they do. Um, it, it's kind of, it, it's amazing. And, uh, someone on that training team is, is, uh, celebrating quite a, quite a, uh, feat, you know, and I don't want to, I don't want to steal your thunder on that. Uh, so can you share about that? Yeah. Um, well, Dr. Armand Rossi, he's also the Dean of uh, clinics, I believe down at Sherman. Mm -hmm. uh, Armand has been teaching for the ICPA for 30, over 30 years now. Wow. And wow. Um, just uh, absolute uh, wonderful human being, wonderful soul, just a giver, you know, and, uh, he is teaching, he will be teaching his last class for the ICPA, uh, on June 24th. So that's down at Cleveland Chiropractic College. I put a post out and I said, guys, make me change venues. <laughs> you know, let's, let's make this so big that I have to s switch to a larger, you know, auditorium style kind of, you know, setup. Um, but it's just a chance to see one of the absolute legends in the profession, one of the greats, um, you know, in, in his last, uh, you know, ICPA presentation. Uh, he's not retiring as, you know, you know, dean of clinic, uh, I believe it's dean of clinics um, uh, down at Sherman. Uh, so he's still working, um, but the travel associated with traveling and teaching um, is, you know, it gets old, I'm sure, at a certain point. So we have a wonderful new uh, instructor coming into the fold, Dr. Shannon Good, uh, who teaches down at Life, and um, and uh, she'll be at the class on Ju in June as well. And I'll be down there, and uh, it's going to be a great time, and it'll be an excellent, uh, you know, kind of uh, send off for for Armand, just a celebration of what he's given to the profession as a whole and, and specifically the ICPA has really devoted himself to the organization. And can you share one more time the details for people that want to be, be at that? Yeah, uh, that's down in Overland Park. So uh, at Cleveland Chiropractic College on June 24th. Um, and you can go, uh, you can, you can simply go to the ICPA website, ICPA for kids, the number four K-I-D-S uh, dot com and click on training and then you can go down and and look at the schedule and you'll see that coming up on june 24th 
Well, that's that's pretty exciting. And Armand's an incredible, incredible soul. And you know, you all, the ICPA, attract some pretty phenomenal souls in their uh, teaching team as, as I, you know, not surprising. So um, as we're going to be wrapping up here, the next segment is going to be coming up um, pretty quick here, a few more minutes. Is there anything, what else would you like people to know about either kids and care or about the ICPA? Um, well, let's yeah, see. I mean, we have our yearly, uh, maybe every, I don't, I don't want to commit to yearly, but we have our every <laughs> two year ICPA gathering that's coming up next March, March 15th and 16th in Reston, Virginia. And, um, you know, to get a flavor of what that event is like, it's really, it's like coming together as a family um, and lots of time for connection. I'm sure it has a very similar vibe to, uh, you know, Mile High. I'll be out at Mile High hopefully this year, uh, Danny. So we'll we'll get to hang out in person. Um, and, um, but if you wanted to keep an eye on the ICPA's YouTube channel, you could, uh, you could see, we're releasing all of the full talks from the last gathering for everyone to just kind of, you know, see on YouTube. And uh, I really think it's at the, we're at the point where we just have to start kind of, there's so much content, you know, and, and you're generating, you know, we're all generating, you know, content. We need to start just giving it away, um, you know, to, uh, to really start impacting, uh, like you're saying, to make sure there's enough, uh, you know, future chiropractors that are committed to family care, pediatric care. So that we're, we're kind of, you know, committed to that idea as well of, uh, you know, giving more and more content away. So uh, you can keep an eye on our YouTube channel for that. Uh, we're going to be releasing all the full talks, uh, you know, there. And I just want to say also, it's been such an honor to uh, kind of be, you know, highlighted as the, you know, uh, kind of the marquee donation, you know, uh, nonprofit here and uh, you're doing a wonderful job Danny and it's really appreciated um, so uh, I just want to say thank you well thank you for saying that and you know you said something super important about your um, some your you know the event in March the ICPA summit mm -hmm. community and connection and collaboration you know chiropractors overall um often can feel like a lone wolf they're in their office and they can be in a fighting a battle against a paradigm and come across that and and they grow when they our profession just the nature of what we do as, as chiropractors is about connection and community the community within our bodies and 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 communication connection communication and uh community and so you have to experience that in your life and, um, you know, the, the thing like the ICPA has their, uh, you have your uh, group, you have your social media group, right? It's the, yep, what's yep. it called again? The, uh, the ICPA uh, member, fa the Facebook group. Yeah. The right. Facebook. And it creates a hive mind and it creates community and building connection. Yep. We need that. We all thrive on that. And people out there see chiropractors, our fellow chiropractors more as a family, you know, and so that we have that in our life. Um, without that, it, it, it's, I personally think it stunts your growth. And, uh, you know, you don't grow as much if, if that, and you can feel alone. And that's why we created Mile High is to have a chiropractic family that gets together in the center of the country. And, you know, one of the things that people love about this summit, and I'm sure the summit that you're going to have in person and say about Mile High, I thought like they had to have the best presenters. And I put everything into having great, great presenters. And we do. But when I ask people, what do they love about it? They always say the community and the connection. Yeah. I'm just yeah. faces, you know, and I was like, oh, I didn't realize that that was important. You know, after a couple of years of hearing, I was like, oh, I, it kind of put that together. Yeah, totally. I totally agree. That was, that's been our feedback too. And that like, like you're, you're saying as well, that's so needed, you know, right now. And it feels so polarizing and, oh gosh, next year with, you know, an election and I don't even think about, you know, and how it just kind of pulls us apart. I think it's really important for, you know, for us to kind of lock arms and really kind of, you know, stick together, uh, you know, as a uh, as a really strong cohort of the chiropractic profession, those of us who uh, feel uh, committed to taking care of families, uh, you know, wellness based care, salutogenic mindset in practice, uh, these things, if not defended, uh, will go by the wayside. And so I think that's our job. 
uh, you know, especially over the next few years as things kind of pull apart, you know, uh, more intensely uh, to stick together, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's a, it, it's 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 vital. We'll, we'll have more impact together. So, um, again, thank you for taking the time to be on this summit and truly thank you for doing all that you're doing with the ICPA. I, I know what it's like practicing and doing stuff. It's, it's and I don't know, like having four kids on top of that, I only have two, <laughs> um, but I know what it's like. And yeah, it takes a really certain mission, purpose and soul to be able to to do that and do it with the heart that you do. So, so thank you for doing that. And again, people that are watching this, please a donate to the ICPA, b um, become a member, um, and let's uh, continue to get more kids on more tables um, more often in our offices. Absolutely, hundred percent agree. Yeah. So, and thank you everybody, and you know, stay tuned. The next segment is going to come up right here really quick as we switch over. Thank you for being part of the summit today. And you know, you can tell your friends and colleagues to join us today. They can still enroll all weekend. So go milehighsummit.com and they can, you know, get in on it. And of course, you're going to want to get the replays and there's a VIP access there. So uh, keep changing spines, lives and minds with chiropractic. We look forward to seeing people in September at, uh, at mile high at 20, you know, mile high 11. I, I kind of can't even believe it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see everybody there.